Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. I know that I just uploaded a video on it, but uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. I do want to talk to you guys about what is going to be happening in this coming year. This coming year is key for Ripple and XRP's success. And we're going to be discussing that. We're going to be talking about that. And uh, before we fully jump into things, I just want to ask you guys if you guys could please leave leave a like on this video. I do greatly appreciate it. It does help the channel immensely. So thank you. But with that in mind, we are looking at Bitcoin pumping 589. No, but seriously, uh, up 5.89%, which is pretty funny considering the fact that we are recording an XRP video. I thought that that was funny to say the least. Um, but nonetheless, I do want to discuss to you guys what is happening right now throughout this market. So I do hope anybody who was looking to enter into XRP, get their family into XRP, whatever the case may be, bought the dip because the dip was very significant. XRP at 90 cents to a lot of people might not seem like a lot because we were buying at 17 cents, 20 cents, 11 cents at some point in time as well. Um, but 90 cents is also a significant level. Listen, you know, if we go to $10, it's still a 10x. So when we're looking at these long-term projects, also, I just want you guys to understand that I still project 10 to $15 for XRP by the end of this bull run. But when we're looking at these projects, we have to look at the long term aspects of them as well to really kind of further our investments and make sure that what we are investing in is 100% viable. For example, where does XRP look like it's going to be playing a big role in as we do march forward on in time? Well, I know where it's going to play a role in on demand liquidity, providing li liquidity for the future of money, aka digitized payments, distributed ledger technologies, CBDCs, etc. So I think that XRP is a solid sound investment and I do not care about this SEC lawsuit. We've discussed it. We debunked it. We've talked about it multiple times. I don't think that it's that it is anything to be concerned about now with this in mind before we fully jump on into this video i just want to let you guys know that the ultimate crusader trading bundle pack is still on sale 50 percent off for a limited time only the time is running out for this there's a little to no time left there's only four hours left on the sale it is 50 percent off right now includes all of the you know videos on the website right now which is ncashofficial.com but it does include all future content for free as well which i'm going to be uploading a ton of content in terms of you know residual income base points and stuff like that as well but you guys are not obligated to purchase anything i'm just letting you guys know for anybody who is interested but with that being said let's move on so we have been seeing a ton of growth within the Ripple ecosystem. First off, we always talk about the Ripple net. We talk about the XRP ledger. We talk about what Ripple is building. We talk about what XRP is doing. A lot of people think that XRP does not even play a big role at all in the game, but that is not the case. XRP is the big, you know, I would say XRP is going to be the fuel that really lights the flame for Ripple to really move. Now, of course, in terms of what is happening behind the scenes, uh, we do see here Ripple in an effort to help Ripple employees bring their most genuine selves to the job. Uh, we do see here, I do not, I'm not even going to try pronouncing his name, I'll probably butcher it, but he took on a global co lead role uh, for our Asian ERG. Now, with this in mind, okay, they are hiring a lot of individuals, and we do see here Ripple is hiring hundreds of employees worldwide that will expand XRP Ledger and RippleNet. XRP is in good hands. Now, this is all happening while there is a lawsuit intact for the US, okay? And people don't realize what is actually happening behind closed doors, but realistically speaking, the US is stifling innovation and they are falling well behind in the race to digitize payments and the future of payment technology. XRP is the leading name in the game right now. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. I get it. There's other altcoins out there that are doing very significant moves as well. For example, HBAR is making very great strides. Um, but in terms of what XRP has built, Ripple has built themselves the perfect foundation to disrupt this massive market. And I believe that when we're looking at XRP in another five years, uh, a lot of people are going to look back on these days and say, wow, I wish I could have bought XRP at a dollar. Now with this, we also see here it's coming. Crypto Regulation 2022 US Release Policy Agenda for Cryptocurrencies XRP Will Melt Faces. Listen closely. With 2021 coming quickly to an end, financial regulators are drawing up their roadmap for crypto regulation in 2022. That so-called crypto spin sprint uh, officially unveiled on Tuesday. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Jennifer Schomberger. 
I was talking so much about the sprint not necessarily being a crawl that I couldn't even say the word, but talk to me about what's included in this roadmap and what we can expect. Hey there, Kiko. That's right. U.S. financial regulators out with their policy agenda for how to regulate cryptocurrencies. The so-called crypto sprint, as regulators are calling it, sketches out a to-do list for 2022 uh, that will offer crypto players more clarity into the, road, the rules of the road ahead, something that the industry has been clamoring for. It summarizes plans by the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, and the comptroller of the currency for what banks can legally do within crypto and how they should comply with current regulations on the books. Regulators will focus on oversight of how banks could store crypto assets safely, handling exchanging customers' dollars for cryptocurrencies, settling trades, and issuing loans backed with crypto. The agencies are also looking at assessing capital requirements for holding crypto assets. On the back of this, the comptroller of the currency is clarifying that national banks can engage in cryptocurrency activities so long as they have approval from their regulator. Should note that few banks actually play in the crypto space right now, but if they wanted to, they would need approval from the OCC. Acting comptroller of the currency, Michael Su, saying in a statement, providing this clarity will help ensure that these cryptocurrency distributed ledger and stablecoin activities will be conducted by national banks and federal savings associations in a safe and sound manner. This will provide assurance that crypto asset activities taking place inside of the federal regulatory perimeter are being conducted responsibly. Now, Akiko, regulators are expected to provide more details on this. And I just want you to all understand that this is all focused on the banks. Every individual will be able to utilize crypto. This is why we are so early in the game for crypto. Not a lot of people understand what is happening. But check this out. Regulators focus on crypto, storing crypto assets, exchanging dollars for crypto, settling trades, issuing crypto-backed loans, holding crypto on the balance sheet, all for banks. The adoption at an enterprise-grade level, financial institutional level, is happening in 2022 this is all focused on dlts stable coins all of them right this is all crypto crypto is going to grow at a massive rate and i am so extremely bullish on xrp regulations clarity it's all coming we also see here the perfect storm is waiting for banks in november 2022 the amount of concurrent change that financial institutions will face in november 2022 will now be all clubbed together this is huge okay i don't think a lot of people realize how big this is actually going to be but a few people do for example kevin cage literally telling us iso standard tokens are going to explode in price i suppose this bull run is just raising the liquidity levels before the perfect storm polysign liquidity hub xrp xlm qnt and others yes it is going to be huge target 2 is integrated with ripple with tas network gateway eu payment system this and this check this out guys this is absolutely massive this is all for financial institutions banks all of the payments treasury all this stuff this is going to be absolutely ridiculous at scale and of course they are mentioning ripple they're talking about swiftnet and they are talking about cnet which leads us all the way back to q and t uh in terms of quant quant's going to be massive uh i i've always told you guys even at 200 dollars quant's undervalued 300 dollars undervalued 400 dollars undervalued it's undervalued until we are at bitcoin levels and uh, even then we're still undervalued uh the next cycle is going to be absolutely parabolic for ISO 222 tokens, of course. Um, but I also think that regulated tokens or tokens that are doing absolutely incredible things, for an example, Kevin Cage has a few great examples in his uh, bio. He's talking about XRP, QNT, DAG, Casper, HBAR, even API 3. API 3 is great for the future in terms of connectivity. But we also talk about so many other altcoins. You know, we talk about XDC as well. There is a huge amount of tokens that are going to be absolutely parabolic as we do march forward on into November 22. And I don't think a lot of people are realizing how huge this is actually going to be for a lot of these altcoins, especially Ripple. And of course, we're talking more so about cryptocurrency regulation. Cryptocurrency regulation is coming, and I believe that Ripple is going to be the foundation for what is going to be happening within regulations as we did see this announced on November 16th, talking all about their framework, uh, essentially a framework that 
Ripple themselves has fully designed, which I thought that that was pretty funny. Um, of course, I, I do think that this is going to come to fruition. I, I just want to see some sort of update within this lawsuit, but we have not seen anything. That it's honestly like the case has just gone stale. It, we, it's 100% quiet. We haven't seen a ma major update at all. And uh, we've seen this come out in November. Could we be seeing a settlement very soon? It's very possible. And I do think that Ripple is going to lead the way for cryptocurrency regulation. We also see a Ripple net is bigger than we think, XRP. And it is 100% way bigger than anybody actually sees it, right? We always look back at this, okay? We talk about the quadrillions of market cap for a lot of these derivatives markets. You know, we're talking about one quadrillion dollars, 300 uh, trillion for private businesses and real estate. You know, these markets are absolutely huge, right? And when we're talking about this, okay, we talk about what Ripple has done this year alone. First off, they announced the liquidity hub for the enterprise grade use cases on November 9th. We've talked about this. We've talked about how huge this is for tokenized assets, leveraging crypto, smart contracts, you know, the, the trade of pretty much value as well. There is so much going on behind closed doors that a lot of people are just not realizing, okay? And, and we're seeing banks and financial institutions pretty much adopting crypto at scale currently right before the big storm comes which is going to be happening in 2022 okay so pay attention to what is happening we also see a republican apalu partners with ripple to develop digital currency strategy which of course we've talked about we discussed this now this was huge okay i, I talked to you guys about how big this is actually going to be and uh when we're talking about cbdc's they are the future especially in terms of payments and of course we did see odlc's record growth and traction in 2021 this happened goes back to october 29th by the way uh and this is talking about massive growth and this is going to continue to grow okay ripple and xrp are just beginning crypto is in its infancy stages and this is just the the tip of the iceberg we've been seeing so many updates throughout this entire year in just the past couple months all right this is still october okay we're seeing ripple and people debut new first in market services in middle east and of course you did see on the same date ripple continues to build momentum in mina with first on-demand liquidity deployment in middle east and again we go back to the digital pound foundation again working with q and t uh, and there there's been so much updates within cbdc talk you know, even again in October, you know, Ripple and Tranglo Singapore's partnership scales to new heights in Asia Pacific. Again, you know, the Ripple drop machine learning on RippleNet developers building on the XRP ledger and CBDCs on the XRP ledger. Not even one month later, they announced, you know, a CBDC announcement with, uh, guess who, right? Palu. Okay, so we're seeing so much come to fruition from the RippleNet side of things. RippleNet is growing and growing and growing. And the best part about this, okay, is that everybody always says, well, RippleNet is whatever. They don't even use XRP. But that is the funny thing. They will be utilizing XRP. XRP is right here. Okay, first off. And uh, when we're talking about stuff like this, okay, we talk about cross-border transactions. We talk about ODL. We talk about the on-demand liquidity service and within the cross-border sector, of course, we talk about how they will utilize XRP as the liquidity service or the liquidity bridge, if you will, because of course, XRP has been always looked at as the bridge currency. And it still is that, okay? It still is going to be utilized like that. And here's exactly how it works. RippleNet customers can use the XRP to bridge two currencies in as little as three seconds, ensuring payments are quickly sent and received in local currency on either side of a transaction. Listen, I don't need to tell you guys exactly what's happening. You guys don't need to believe me. You guys don't even need to listen to me, okay? This is not financial advice. This is not me telling you anything to do, but I'm just saying, do your own research, understand what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, we always talk about this, right? You know, ISO 222 adoption in November of 2022. Uh, this is happening. Okay, this is the perfect storm. This is going to be the match that lights it all up. And this is going to be a spark that will pretty much foster in crypto adoption at scale. Okay, we talked about this. This is the sprint for crypto. Okay, this is going to be what we want to see. This is banks accepting crypto at scale. And we are in crypto. Okay, and I just want you guys to understand, we are in crypto at a $2.58 trillion market cap. Yeah, um, let's add a couple zeros to that and say crypto is going to be a 20 to $200 trillion market cap asset class by at least 2025. I strongly believe that. Even by the end of this decade, when we're talking about 2030, 
This market is going to be extremely different. That is why we are so early in the game for crypto. So with that in mind, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.